Hi, I'm, I'm Bruce Lawson from Opera, the uh, little Norwegian web browser with 350 million users. But enough about me, let's talk about you. And most specifically, where will your next customers come from? Almost certainly, many of them will come from within this circle. One reason is because there are more human beings living inside this circle than outside this circle. There are four billion people in Asia now. And the United Nations predicts that by 2050, that will be five billion. The United Nations also predicts that the place after your next customers will be Africa, and by 2050, that will double in size from one to two billion, and by 2100, which is a little late for me, and maybe not for you, by 2100, the population of Africa will stabilize at five billion people, according to the UN. Do not be alarmed, they can all fit in. Maps lie to us, Africa's really big. You can get China, the US, India, and Europe into Africa comfortably. There's lots of room. <laughs> Another reason that many of your customers are going to come from Asia isn't just because of the number of people there, it's because these are some of the most dynamic economies in the world. China, for example, has a population of 1.3 billion, and last year's GDP growth was 7.7%. I don't know what it's like here in the Netherlands, but that is quite a little bit more than we see in the UK, where I'm from. Um, in China, last year in the States, Black, Black Friday and Cyber Monday took 2.9 billion on the web. Double 11 day in China, the 11th of November, saw 9.2 billion US dollars taken on the web. Forrester predicts that by 2019, there will be one trillion US dollars a year changing hands over the web in China. This is lots of money, and maybe you would like some of it. <coughs> Indonesia too. Indonesia is a huge nation, 250 million people, GDP growth of 5.8%. I was privileged to go there last year and do some fact-finding. Um, what's interesting about Indonesia is everybody has a smartphone, but everybody reports challenges because 75% of the users are on old networks. Because Indonesia is made of thousands of islands, the Dutch know this because they visited most of them, um, <laughs> and of course, thousand, thousand island dwellings there. Bangladesh. Bangladesh is often considered to be a, a, a sluggard in the Asian economies, yet that has GDP growth of 7%. It was the first South Asian country to adopt cellular technology. And by 2008, 50% of households in Bangladesh had access, had access to a mobile phone. Myanmar, 53 million people, a whopping 13.6% GDP growth. Last year, the government of Myanmar, as part of its democratization process, um, relaxed regulations on mobile phones, and overnight, the price of a SIM dropped from $2,000 to $1.50. Mobile phones are exploding, not literally, because that would damage your pocket, but mobile phone use is exploding in Myanmar. India, of course, India, 1.2 billion, the largest democracy on the planet, a GDP growth of 6.9%. 190 million internet users last year, that's predicted to double to 400 million by 2018. The web will contribute 200 billion to India's GDP. That's 5% of its total. So what do these have in common? Obviously, everybody's coming to the web on smartphones. It has a more profound commonalities, apart from China, because of the Communist Party's one-child policy. All of these nations have incredibly youthful populations. Young people have disposable income, and young people are, of course, very, very comfortable with doing transactions and interacting over the web. But there's something even more profoundly, uh, there's an even more profound commonality between these territories. Uh, Opera Mini, which is the product that my employers make, um, I, can, I can get hold of aggregated stats by territory. I need to say, 
we cannot, even if we wanted to, track individual users, but we can look at aggregates for a territory. This is the top 10 domains visited on Opera Mini uh, last year in the US. And you can see they're pretty obvious. There's search, there is stalking your ex from school, there is uh, kitten videos, uncensored information with Wikipedia, WordPress, Amazon, etc. The top 10 handsets are, as you might expect, quite high-end. Apple, Blackberry, good smart Samsungs. The top 10 domains visited in the same time period in India are pretty much identical. Stalking your ex, search, kittens on skateboards, uncensored information. India loves cricket, so crick buzz is there. But it's pretty much the same. The handsets, however, are lower end. In Nigeria, over the same period, lo and behold, BBC, uncensored information, kittens on skateboards, stalking your ex, and search. But the handsets are lower end still. Techno, a local African brand, is there. But what this shows, and to me, because I'm an old hippie at heart, underneath this stupid hairstyle, what this shows to me is that regardless of territory, regardless of hardware available, regardless of disposable income available to you to purchase the hardware, people worldwide want to consume the same goods and services. And they might want to consume your goods and services should you choose to sell to them in a way they can consume. One of the things we're doing at Opera, that's my employer, uh, is trying to make sure that the web works better on low-spec devices. Our colleagues in Google are heavily invested in 60 frames a second, and so are we. But we're also heavily invested in making sure that the people in Bangladesh and India and Cote d'Ivoire and Belize, the people whom we serve, can run a browser successfully on a lower specification device. We know that 25% of all new Android shipments go with only 512 meg. So this is a cake that my colleagues ate in our web tech team to celebrate our 2048th commit to the Chromium project. Most of those are related to reducing the size of the binary, reducing the size of the memory consumption, and reducing power consumption. One thing we've been doing with our colleagues in Google and our colleagues from Mozilla is something called installable web apps. Consumers love to have uh, an icon on the home screen they can tickle into life with their digits. Uh, people don't like bookmarking in web browsers. We know from 15 years of Opera Desktop that 90, 90% of our customers never bookmarked one single website, nor never went to any of the pre-installed bookmarks. It's even worse on mobile. But installable web apps is a way of making a website you give it a light, a light uh, data file, a manifest, it's just JSON. You point to icons, and if the user chooses to install it, all that gets put on the device is the icon. When you click on the device, when you click on the icon, if you're on HTTPS, the website will open full screen, indistinguishably from a native app, and if you have a service worker, it'll run offline. But it's not on the device. This web app is hosted on a server is what we old people call a website. You try them. It's available in Chrome for, Opera, Chrome for Android Now. It's available in Opera for Android Now. It's available on iOS in a non-standard form. I'm not beating up on Apple because they invented it before we standardized it. And then HTML5Doctor.com, I wrote an article with Marcos Caceres of Firefox on how to use this. It looks like this. This is something we're trialing. If you visit a site within you know, a certain time frame, if you've shown investment, if you've shown engagement, and you have a manifest, then Opera will say, would you like to add this to home screen? We haven't, this isn't production yet. This is something we're trialing. This is available in Chrome for Android now. Responsive images is something else we've been doing. In 2011, when I was going to conferences, every developer told me that they were worried about images. You either send a great quality image that's suitable for retina, and older devices are taking in loads of data they don't need, or you serve low quality images, and it looks crap on retina. So I got to thinking, and I, I confess I had a slight hangover, and I wrote a blog post um, with a suggestion to solve the problem. My suggestion wasn't good, but other people took it on board, and now it's available in HTML, it's available in all the browsers, 
except for Safari. Um, and this allows you to say to a device, if you are high definition, if you're a widescreen, have this huge image. If you're a monochrome Blackberry, have this image. It's an identical image, just smaller. Because the average website is now 2 plus meg, of which 1.3 meg are images. And this costs your users money, because many people in developing economies pay by the megabyte, or their data plans are pretty, pretty low in the amount of data they can consume, and they're comparatively expensive. Citizens of rich nations pay between 1% and 2% of monthly income for data. Uh, in 51 emerging economies, the average entry-level broadband package was at 10%. Or to put that into perspective, at minimum wage, you have to work 34 hours in Brazil to afford a 500 megabyte monthly plan, 28 hours to work in Nigeria, 18 in South Africa, one hour in Germany. If you're sending bloated images, if you're sending loads of crap, you are costing your users money, and that is maybe not the best way to form a meaningful business relationship. I'm not an MBA. Um, could you tell? So uh, many people use what we call proxy browsers to sort this out. And proxy browsers squish stuff. That's a comp sci term, apologies. Um, Opera Mini is one. That's my employer. Other proxy browsers are available. QQ, UC Web, Puffin. Uh, there was a browser called Microsoft Express on um, Nokia phones. Microsoft and Opera signed a deal to migrate their 100 million users over to Opera Mini in the next 18 months or so. And proxy browsers do the hard work on a server. They were invented for feature phones which were so low powered they couldn't actually run an operating system. So they couldn't render web pages. And this is Thor, and Thor lives in Iceland. He's powered by uh, hydroelectricity and he's cooled by glacial water. And, of course, Thor has a hammer. Stop hammer time, Thor says. You request, you request, some people are old. You request <laughs> a URL. It's rendered on Thor. We squish it down by about 90%, and then it's sent to the user. And, of course, if they're only consuming 10% of data, it loads faster, and it's cheaper for them. And as a nice byproduct, it's cheaper for your bandwidth bills. So Opera Mini, testing in India a couple of months ago, uses 14% less battery. This is vital if you have a three-hour commute in Bombay traffic. It's also vital if you live in a village where there is regular power outages, so you cannot be certain you will be able to recharge your device. And in tests by an independent company, it uses 89% less data than other mobile browsers tested in India. So we do lots of business. 120,000 transactions a second. Uh, 23 petabytes last month. 23 petabytes is a big number. It is bigger than a Tyrannosaurus Rex's tummy after his Christmas dinner. That's big, but how big? To put it into perspective, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN smashes 600 million times a second. They collect the data. They collect 30 petabytes a year. We compressed 23 petabytes last month. And so we're big in these developing markets because we save people money and we make your websites faster. But maybe this is counterintuitive. Our servers are not in the territories we serve. And we're kind of used to thinking that if you want speed, you need to be near the server. But we don't find that. Our servers are in China because of the Great Firewall, Iceland, here in Amsterdam, and East and West Coast America. Amsterdam serves uh, the ex-CIS, the ex-USSR, and Europe. Iceland serves Asia, and East Coast America serves Africa. So what happens is, a, a user in South Africa requests your website. <laughs> Her network is as overloaded as this truck that nearly crashed into me in northern India a few months ago. India, for example, only 96,000 of their 750,000 cell towers are 3G enabled, and only 35,000 of those have a fiber optic connection. 
The territories we serve have bad connections. So this is what we do. In Cape Town, a user requests your website. She sends one request for a URL to us in the East Coast. We are close to the big websites on fast connections. The average website makes 60 requests. So we do the requests over a fast network, we compress it all, we render it, and we send one binary blob down the wire back to the user. If you're interested in these markets, hi. If you're interested in these markets, <laughs> you, there are certain design considerations that you need to take into account. This is non-technical. Any designers in the house? I bet you feel weird. Um, so don't do this. Don't do that. In Thailand, if you write somebody's name in red, you are literally wishing them dead. And again, <laughs> I'm no MBA, but I'm not certain that's the way to encourage people into your brand. Don't do this. In Indonesia, there are tens of millions of people who have one name. This is my friend Putri. Uh, her Twitter handle is hash only Putri. She does not have two names. And if you force her to make up a name, She's not going to like you very much. There's also tech constraints, of course, when designing for proxy browsers. These are some of my old students in Bangkok getting into a tuk-tuk. Everything on a proxy browser, any proxy browser, not just Opera Mini, happens on the server. So everything needs user interaction. Everything requires a round trip. On Opera, we run f JavaScript, but for five seconds, and then we stop it to get the data down to the user. The consequently JavaScript-only APIs do not work. Similarly, we do not render CSS rounded corners or gradients yet. Um, the reason for this is we can tell a Java feature phone draw a straight line. We cannot reliably tell it to draw a gradient or a curve. We would have to make it into a bitmap, and that would bloat the page rather than compress it. But rounded corners and gradients are not content. They're nice to have. Your user in Bangladesh is not going to care about the rounded corner. But if your website renders and your competitor's website does not render, you get the business. Animations don't show uh, because it, we want to conserve people's battery life. We don't download web fonts. Web fonts are lovely for design, but they are primarily for aesthetic purposes. We've also found that on very old devices, the system fonts, number one, are most likely to be in the user's target language, which may not be a Latin script, but also they're heavily optimized for the screen they're on. So we use system fonts. If you want icons, you do not use icon fonts. Use SVG. You are also helping many people who are dyslexic who find icon fonts to be difficult. The methodology you need is a brand new thing that is taking the world by storm. It's not. It was invented by Tim Berners-Lee. It's built into the fabric of the internet. Progressive enhancement, HTML for content, CSS for design, and JavaScript for interactivity, but it's not required. There's a fashion at the moment for super-duper JavaScript front ends like Angular and Ember. Just don't unless you actually know how to make them progressive enhanced. Many of them just fail on proxy browsers. Airbnb discovered this. Airbnb replaced their previous app with what they called their Holy Grail app. They were enormously excited. It looks exactly the same as the app it replaced, but it feels drastically faster because we serve up real HTML rather than waiting for the browser to download lots of JavaScript and parse it. It's fully crawlable by search engines, and it feels five times faster, they said. The rise of the smartphones. This would be a great sci-fi uh, show. Smartphones, of course, are going great guns. It's unsurprising that the biggest consumers are the biggest nations, like India, China, the US. But smartphones are also hugely increasing in the Middle East and Africa, and at the expense of feature phones. But something interesting is happening. These are 100 devices that most of you will never have heard of. These are the first 100 Android devices in Nepal, Bangladesh, and India in 2013 that shipped with the Opera Mini proxy browser pre-installed, which is weird. Why do you need a proxy browser meant for feature phones on a smart device? 
And the reason is Bruce's law of smartness. It doesn't matter how smart your device is if your network is dumb. Prices are coming down. Electronic components get ever cheaper. But infrastructure takes a long time to upgrade. These are the electric and the phone cables outside my apartment in Bangkok. It will take decades before this stuff is replaced. 92% of people live within range of a 2G network, but only 49% of people live within range of a 3G network. Network is the bottleneck, which is why, for Opera Mini, the only people I can give reliable stats for, we've seen huge conversion in places like Indonesia from feature phones to smartphones, even though we, are, we ourselves kind of thought that the product was only really for feature phones. It's also available on Windows Phone, because that's popular in emerging economies, and it's available on iOS, and it also compresses videos, I've been told to say. <laughs> Boss. Um, so what's next? Next for us is making sure that Opera Mini is more compatible with the vision that your web designers had. In order to compress, in order to get the web to people, we choose to make compromises on your behalf without asking you. We're going to try to be more compatible. The last 10 years of Opera Mini's life has been about compression overall. We're not giving up on compression, but we're focusing more on making it more compatible. And it turns out that Bruce's law of smartness doesn't always hold true. We've discovered that if you come to the Opera Mini servers with a smart device, we can ask the device to do more. We can ask it to do more unpacking, which means we can do more compression. Uh, these are initial tests. This is nowhere near production ready. This is unoptimized. Already, we can compress down by 90%. With this new version we're trialing, we're seeing 30 to 50% better compression again. And this is important. It's important for your business, because it's your next customers. It's important for our business, my employer's business, because we make money this way. And the reason it, it's personally important for me, the reason I fly across the world and terrify myself talking to 1,300 people in the Netherlands, is I truly believe that it's vital to bring the web to people. There are tens of millions of people in Bangladesh who cannot afford a school textbook, but they can afford the web, and that is their textbook. There are people in sub-Saharan Africa for whom it is miles to walk to a medical practitioner, but the web is first-line medical information. There are people in repressive regimes worldwide for whom the internet is their one connection with the outside world. And if my hippie rhetoric doesn't sway you, here's some numbers. The McKinsey Institute, who are some kind of crazed group of consultants who do governments and stuff, they said, an increase in internet maturity similar to the one experienced in mature countries over the last five years creates an increase in real GDP per capita of $500 on average during that period. It took the Industrial Revolution of the 19th century 50 years to produce the same result. This stuff matters. Thank you for your attention.